We have a special treat today. We like to mix things up. We got to hear about accounting last week. This week, you're going to get to hear about marketing. You're going to hear that from Professor John Sherry. Dr. Sherry has been chair of the marketing department about here at Mendoza College of Business since 2005. Uh, prior to that, he spent about uh, 20 years at Northwestern in the Kellogg School of Business. He is a Notre Dame alum, graduated with a double major in English and Anthropology, or Anthropology in English. Uh, and he's got some great stories, and some great experiences, and some great things to say. Don't ask him about his 17-foot jump shot until the end, okay? Professor John Sherry. I was told you guys are a talkative bunch. You ask a lot of questions, so that's good. I'll hold you to it. I, I have some slides that just kind of introduce the marketing program. Uh, it's always more interesting if I can talk directly to you. This one works. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. I don't know how I'm going to drink and hold a mic and click at the same time here. But uh, so anyway, um, this this is me. This is the the most important information that you have, which is uh, listings for our uh, our web page, our Facebook page, and uh, Twitter. Right. So we are are trying to uh, go full steam ahead into social media. And uh, everything that you need to know about the department is on those sites, right? So I would encourage you to, to go ahead and visit those. Um, let's see if this will... That's not it? Ah, okay. All right, so I'll just uh, talk to you briefly about, uh, about marketing and the marketing department. Uh, probably the, the easiest way to think about what we do is we try to identify consumer needs uh, and satisfy them. And then we tweak the needs uh, into the area of consumer wants, and we try to satisfy them. And sometimes we get so good at what we do that we end up causing problems, right? So here's a, an example of a product that is about as plain and inert as you can imagine. Uh, water is a commodity. You know, in blind taste tests, none of you would probably be able to tell the difference between one form of water and another that came in bottles like this. But marketers were able to discern a need uh, uh, that, that became a want for a, a distinctive kind of water. So there are any number of bottled waters out there in the market that consumers really swear by as an important part of their social identity, right? Who they are. So here's, uh, here's just one particular example, uh, Fiji water. An awful lot of information, both uh, emotional and intellectual, in this particular ad. And if we were to ask about your particular favorite waters, each one of you probably would, would have one. Um, we become so successful at distributing that, that, that pollution becomes a problem, right? The, the discard, the bottles, the, the waste from the actual product gets out into the ecosystem, causes problems. We have continent-sized clumps of plastic floating around in the Pacific Ocean that are directly, directly attributable to uh, the things that we've done as marketers, which is a problem, and we need to address that, and we try to clean it up. Right? So uh, if you think about marketing from stem to stern, we do an awful lot of great things. We also cause some problems. And when we need to, we get in there and try and rectify those problems as, as quickly as possible. So it's not a, not a uh, kind of a one-size-fits-all uh, approach. I'm going to stick with the water example just to illustrate kind of the, the life cycle of marketing thinking. Um, fixtures in your home traditionally have been thought of as lasting forever. They're just part of the furniture. Uh, they should work, and they should work for 20 years, and you shouldn't have to think about them. That would be old school thinking, right? That's uh, when marketers treated a product as being primarily functional. It was a tool. It should solve a problem, and there it is. It gets water into your sink, All right? So durability. <clears throat> Over time, um, we find that all faucets are about equally durable. Uh, we manufacture to a particular standard, and, and uh, uh, the world is, is full of, of fixtures that do the same thing. We start to pay attention to consumer behaviors then. 
how can we make this product more interesting? How can we make it address consumer needs more directly? Well, we pay attention to what people are actually doing when they're around faucets, right? So here's another example. You might have been in a situation like this where you've got gunk all over your hands. Uh, you don't want to dirty the fixtures in your kitchen and you're trying all kinds of contortions to try and get that lever flipped to get water to flow, all right? So this company will create a, uh, a technology that will allow you to just bump it with your elbow. All you gotta do is tap this fixture and water comes forward, right? You can wash your hands and not get the gunk all over the, uh, all over the, tech, all over the, uh, the fixture, right? So that would be uh, kind of a behavioral approach, right? We, we look at uh, uh, what people are actually doing and solve problems against that. Then pretty soon, everybody's gotten good at, at paying attention to what consumers do. Uh, we run out of interesting, innovative ideas for uh, uh, behavioral changes to products and services. And we look at uh, meanings and aesthetics and art. And we start to think about what water is all about, right? And so, what, in, in a lot of societies, it has to do with, with purity. It has to do with uh, cleanliness. It has to do with uh, elementality. There's probably a sacrament, uh, sacramental dimension to it as well. So we start to draw on all those different meanings, right? And uh, uh, Kohler will come up with a product that looks like this, right? The sink is now shaped like a bowl. It may be reminiscent of a baptismal font. The fixture is gone altogether. The water seems to be coming out of the mirror, right? And the mirror is, is uh, you see reflection in the mirror. Traditionally, you've looked in the water and seen your reflection, so there's a whole tradition of thinking about reflection and contemplation and inquiry and, and self-insight all together in a cluster, right? And so you've got a, a whole new dimension of waterness that you're tapping when you pay attention to aesthetics, right? All right, pretty soon we've, we've aestheticized the environment, we're competing on art, and, and we don't have a significant advantage anymore in the environment intrudes. We take a look at the impact that we're having on the ecosystem, right? And now it becomes important that, uh, uh, that we know potable water is not very available in many countries around the world. We treat it here um, um, pretty callously. One day it's gonna be metered, you're gonna be paying a lot more for water than you are right now. This company comes up with a delivery device that actually helps conserve water, right? It, it allows you to use only as much as you need at a given time, right? So we've gone through an entire cycle of, of solutions to consumer problems. People that are concerned with water and water delivery then take this environmental imperative and they branch out even further. So here's a, a number of different products that look at uh, ways to deliver clean drinking water to consumers around the world, right? So we're still dealing with water. We're still dealing with water delivery, but marketers have found a, a, a more interesting and exciting and, and kind of pro-social way to deliver it. This is an example of a bicycle that will take dirty water and uh, clarify it, clean it as you pedal around from, from place to place. Right? So in, ingenious ways of making water drinkable and getting it to consumers. All examples of, of how marketers work. We start with functions. What, what is the tool that's gonna solve a problem? Then we look at behaviors. Right? What are people actually doing? How can we change products and services to meet that behavior? Finally, how can we delight consumers? How can we make the product or the service uh, just an absolute delight for, for consumers to use? Right? Give them a really um, a profound experience. And as I said now, increasingly we're focusing on the environmental dimension. It's not enough just to be a, a good tool or, or faithful to consumer behavior or beautiful. Right? It also has to enhance our quality of life. It can't create more problems than it solves. And so marketers do all of that stuff. And, and if we can do it with water, imagine what we do with other, uh, other more evocative products there. <clears throat> so here's a definition of marketing. It's the activity, set of institutions, processes for creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. It's not just advertising. It's not just selling, which are common views of marketing, right? It's, it's much more comprehensive. It's also not focused merely on consumers. Consumers are really important, but there are lots of stakeholders in the system whose needs have to be addressed, right? So we try to, uh, to, to deliver this value to not just individual consumers, but stakeholders throughout society. 
I stumble every time I try and say this, right? But this is one of the interesting challenges that our department tries to look at. You can actually hear this if you pay attention you know, when you're standing in line at Starbucks. You can hear somebody say this. <laughs> On the one hand, when I hear this, I think, what a country, right? That we've created so, so specialized a product that, that is individually and totally right for me. And then I think, what a country, right? We spent a lot of time creating a product like this that seems to be you know, possibly frivolous, maybe doesn't add to the common good, maybe diverts our attention away from more important kinds of issues, right? Marketers address both of these dimensions, right? We, we look at solving individual consumer desires, right? We, get, we try to give you exactly what you want, but in the process of doing that, right, it, it again, creates a, an environment that is uh, uh, challenging or maybe problematic from your other uh, uh, realms of experience, right? So when we get described in the newspaper and in the business press, we're usually described as being the business of, of desire or the science of desire. We try to figure out what desire is, what, what consumers want, how do we inflame desire, how do we satisfy desire, and we do it through a number of different research techniques, right? And so this is just kind of a, a, a joking kind of a lampoon of, of marketing research here, but the idea is we try to pay close attention to consumers, right? We, we study what it is they do in the wild to understand what it is they really want and need. And so I try to pick examples that would offend everybody um, as we go through here. This is, uh, especially for Valentine's Day, you guys have probably all seen a variation of this particular cartoon at one point or another, and clearly all males don't shop this way, and all females don't shop this way, right? But there is, there is enough, uh, how can I put it? Uh, there's a, there's a, a, a grain of truth, probably, behind these different perspectives that is interesting, right? Marketers try to understand behavior that is gendered. You know? Why is it that, that women might behave this way, males might behave this way? And how do we get them to behave differently? How can we jolt you out of your familiar behavior patterns and, to, and, and into trying something new? We don't know an awful lot about male consumer behavior, right? It's as interesting as female consumer behavior, but we're still kind of in the early stages of understanding it. I gave a, a, a quick Valentine's Day example of a kind of a quintessentially male product here. Right, kind of an enclosed entertainment center, alcohol delivery system, sleep system, privacy, nook, man cave kind of a thing. Here, and we can all laugh at it, but then we can recognize aspects of our own consumer behaviors in the kind of the underlying desires for this particular product. So you're living in a world where everywhere you go, you're seeing the same products and services. You're seeing the same brands. You're seeing the same competitors out there, which makes you think that you're living in a, uh, from Friedman's perspective, a flat world. The world's becoming more and more similar. Turns out, in fact, that it's not, right? Marketing is helping the world become even more diverse because these products and services may, may be physically the same from one country to another, but the meaning of the product can change from place to place, right? So, I mean, here's, here's the quintessential ideal product, right? So if you look at, look at uh, iPods, for example, the, the, the pod itself, the, the, the tool, the, uh, the artifact, is gonna be the same everywhere you go. Right? But if you use an iPod in Tokyo, right, you're using it so you don't disturb other people. When you use it in Chicago, you, you are using it so that other people don't disturb you. It's a completely different use of the product, a completely different set of meanings and experiences behind it that marketers have to pay attention to. Because in order to make this, sell this successfully in, in countries that are outside the United States, you've got to take into account what it's gonna mean in those other countries. And it can mean things that are pretty dramatically different. And it, and it turns up in uh, the most interesting places as admitters keep coming up with uh, ways to uh, iPod our world. Pope wears Prada. I mean, everybody, everybody uses marketing services. Everybody's attuned to branding. Pope wears Serengeti sunglasses, right? So he's, he's not above <laughs> being immersed in, in marketing culture. It's, uh, it's just a universal phenomenon. So we try to do this uh, uh, in exactly this fashion, show you the products, the services, the distribution channels, the promotional campaigns, uh, marketing from stem to stern, 
technically, right, how you would do it as a proficient manager, but then also try to bounce you around to different countries around the world in individual courses or, or in standalone courses that, that treat international marketing to show you how marketing needs to vary as it moves from place to place around the world. This is a, a snapshot of our marketing faculty. All right. These would be our, our full-time uh, uh, professors, associate professors, assistant professors. We also, in, in red here, have a number of adjunct professors who are currently practicing managers. Most of our faculty have had previous lives as uh, managers. Uh, many of them are active consultants. So you're getting knowledge that's both theoretical and practical. Right? So you'll, you'll understand the behaviors that are, that are behind why consumers do what they do, uh, not, not just from the viewpoint of psychology or sociology or anthropology, but also from the day-to-day -day position in the trench as a brand manager or an account exec. It's a distinguished faculty. We have folks who are current and past presidents of professional associations. Um, they belong to editorial boards. They've written award-winning articles and books. Uh, we have two lifetime uh, achievement award winners from the American Marketing Association on our faculty. Uh, we have folks that write um, um, uh, books, articles, uh, as I said, active consultants and so forth. Our department literally uh, uh, comprises thought leaders of the discipline. These are, these are people that really shape the way that academics and practitioners think about marketing. And the upside is they love to teach, which, which is really, I hate to say, it's really unusual. Right? People, a lot of times, have a research bent to it, and that's the most important thing in, in their lives. Uh, on our faculty, uh, we have folks that are dedicated to producing good research, but they want to translate that into the classroom. All right? So great, great bunch of folks. Uh, Dean Conlon uses this illustration when he uh, uh, welcomes the MBAs into the curriculum. I always like to use this slide because it, it emphasizes what we try to hit in the marketing curriculum. We try to focus on habits of mind, habits of heart, and habits of action. So how you think, how you feel, and how you behave. And we also try to set it into a community context, since so much of the work that you do is, is uh, done in groups, right? And you do so much learning from, uh, from one another. We teach you marketing philosophy, right? We teach you marketing strategy. We teach you how to implement the decisions that you make. And we look at the consequences of your behavior on all the different environments that you operate in. So you're getting a really comprehensive view of marketing. And again, unlike most places, we emphasize not just the, 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 the technical proficiency that you'll have when you're done. We want you to be good managers when you leave here. But we also want, want you to recognize that you are behavioral architects. You literally create the quality of life that we all experience. You have a huge impact on society. So most of us, in, either in our research life, but always in our teaching life, will address both of these issues. We'll ask you to, to become and think about being good practical managers, but we'll also encourage you to consider the impact that you're having on society and what you might be able to do you know, to make society a better place to live. The brand is always with you. Wherever you go, brands insert themselves into your life, right? You can't escape the influence of branding. Marketers create most of the screens through which you perceive the world, right? And we want you to understand that that's not just a business practice, that is a, that's a life practice as well. So tremendous responsibility goes along with being a marketer. So there's our goal, right? The, what we're trying to accomplish here, we want you to assume productive uh, uh, careers in your chosen fields, make contribution to the profession and to your community. We want you to understand the decision-making processes of buyers and sellers. We want you to be skillful in both quantitative and qualitative dimensions. We want you to be able to work effectively in teams, right? And to be aware of the ethical and social responsibilities that you have as a marketer. This is a quick look at the courses that we offer, and I, I'll, I'll zero back in and answer individual questions in just a minute. Uh, I've uh, arrayed them out here for you in three categories, opportunity analysis, planning, and marketing instruments. All right, so we, we have courses that deal with the macro level of marketing all the way through the micro level of marketing. 
a standard way of, of looking at the field comprehensively right, is represented in this particular framework. And again, I won't go through it. I just want you to get a sense of how, how broad and <coughs> comprehensive the field of marketing is from understanding the context in which it occurs to creating, capturing, and sustaining value, our courses are scattered throughout that template, right? So we try to address each one of those different issues for you. There's, there's integration across the courses. Each course builds on um, uh, the last one and leads you into the next one that you'll take, right? So you should get some integration across the, uh, the curriculum. Um, I've indicated in red here the courses that are required. So you'll take a, uh, an intro course, Principles of Marketing. Then you'll take a Marketing Research and a Consumer Behavior course. And then you'll take Strategic Marketing, which is a capstone course in your senior year that, that brings together uh, all of the learning that you've done across the curriculum in one place. Okay. The sequence is really important, all right? Because again, it's developmental. You start with principles where you learn the, the fundamentals, then you dive a little bit more deeply into consumer behavior and organizational buying behavior and marketing research. We want you to take those courses in your junior year. Uh, most of our students go abroad, and so it's really important when you're, when you're planning your schedule to make sure that if you're, if you're going abroad your um, uh, sp uh, spring semester, that you take those two courses in the fall. And if you're going in the fall, you got to take them in the spring. Right? We want to make sure that you get those courses done in your junior year. You're required to take a marketing elective, right? And, and the choice is yours. Any, uh, any elective will do, right, as a requirement. And then the strategy course that I mentioned, you take in your senior year. So you need those um, consumer behavior, marketing research, and an elective in order to take that capstone course spring of your, uh, of your senior year. This is a quick look at the kind of the composition of our students. You can see that uh, we have, uh, it's, it's a predominantly female major, and we might speculate later about uh, why that is. Um, what I hear from exit interviews all the time is that the women really enjoy using both sides of the brain, right? They're using both their quantitative and their qualitative skills. They like the, the mathematical rigor and sophistication that numbers bring to analysis. They also like the ability to be creative, right? They, that they, they can use uh, intuition and insight as well, right? So that's, that's my speculation uh, as far as the, the gender differences there. Um, we have a lot of double majors, okay? Again, that seems to be a, a, a Notre Dame condition. Uh, I was a double major, again, for some, some reason still unknown to myself. Uh, but most of our students like to do that as well. Uh, marketing pairs up really nicely with, with many different fields, whether it's in the social sciences or the humanities, right? because it's ultimately all about consumer behavior. We've got about 184 majors total. <coughs> I just threw this in as a, as a shameless self-tribute here. It's a, a, a cartoon from The Observer where this guy is lamenting the fact that he's double majored in anthropology and business, and the counselor tells him, yeah, you're basically screwed with that combination. Turns out you're not, you can have a really nice career if you double on anthropology and marketing. And a lot of, a lot of our students actually do. All right, so again, you can see art history, classics, design, Chinese, English, film, television, and theater. A lot of, a lot of different uh, double major combos. We have a really um, active marketing club Right. Uh, Kevin Bradford, Professor Kevin Bradford, it's a faculty moderator. It's, it's, it's extremely active. They sponsor a number of different workshops and symposiums during the year, a number of field trips to, uh, to corporations and organizations uh, outside of Notre Dame during the year. Um, and they've got a, a website that you can visit to see the activities that, uh, that they're currently engaged in. We have a student brand strategy and advertising agency that works on real world problems for corporations. Right, so this is composed of undergraduate and uh, uh, MBA students working on teams to create advertising, packaging, new product concepts, better distribution channels, and so forth. All right, and so we've got that opportunity for interaction. I'll let you look at the, the blue highlights of this particular quote. I want to stress uh, that even though we're a marketing department, uh, many experts in the field uh, agree with our position that we don't look at you as customers, all right? 
we, we, we feel we have a customer orientation, but, but you guys are not our customers. We think of you as students. We think of you as apprentices, as, as scholars, right? So we've got lots of different customers that we're, that we're faced with out there in the marketplace, and we treat you significantly differently. Okay. This is just a quick look at where you end up, where you're done, when you're done over time. You see, most people end up uh, taking conventional jobs. Some folks go to grad school. Other people into service programs in the military. Your starting salary is going to be probably around 50000 a year. Right? You can see it's, it's increased pretty, uh, pretty uh, uh, consistently over time. Uh, recent career uh, services statistics show us that our students are gravitating toward these particular firms, right? So uh, an example, the employers that, uh, that will, will come here and hire our students. And you'll end up as be, uh, being an assistant merchandiser or uh, maybe a financial analyst or an associate consultant, maybe a market research analyst, marketing coordinator, media analyst, product management, right? So you can see a number of different industries represented, you know, from conventional consumer packaged goods through, through communications and media companies. Some of our students go on uh, uh, to graduate school, and you can see here, uh, some to law, uh, most to uh, MBAs, uh, some into design programs, art programs. Um, I'm, I'm imagining each of the department chairs are, are really pushing the career services department here. We've got the best career services people on the planet. Um, they're able to arrange internships for you, um, um, sophomore year, uh, junior year. Uh, they're probably even backing up into the freshman year. It's important that you develop a relationship with the career services guys early. Uh, Kevin Monahan is dedicated to marketing. Right? He'll help you with career discernment. Right? He'll help you uh, identify firms that are in your area of interest. He'll help punch up your resume. He'll do whatever it takes to help get you placed in the kind of career that, uh, uh, that's going to be satisfying to you. Uh, there are job fairs during the year. Um, again, the internships are, are very useful because you can make a number of, I don't want to call them false starts, but you can make a number of changes early on. If you start early, you can experiment in different areas of marketing before you decide on that, uh, that job that's going to launch your career. So make sure that you uh, that you spend some time with career services. Okay, that's that's it for me. If there are specific questions that you have <coughs> about classes, about professors, about careers, about marketing in general, yeah. I heard that for marketing managers and advertising managers, sometimes like um, they'll predict you for four or five years, and then like that's like the average lifespan of a job because you don't want the fresh new ideas. You know? Well, I'm, I'm going to have to speak off the top of my head here that uh, career services people would be the ones to give you the actual data. Um, four years is a long time, right? Uh, two years is a, a more conventional life cycle for a particular job, right? So you, you receive uh, academic training here. You are, you are remotely dangerous when you leave here. You've got enough skills to, to be a contributor right away. Companies are going to uh, bring you in and essentially retrain you, give you additional training, uh, additional guidance, and so forth. So the first job that you take is, is not going to resemble probably much at all the, uh, the job or the career that you ultimately end up in. So I would figure like two years worth of, of doing the same kind of a thing before you get uh, turnover. Um, there's an awful lot of reverse uh, mentoring going on in companies right now. Younger people have a lot of skills that older people haven't acquired during the course of, your, uh, of, of their careers. And so uh, you're starting out with an advantage that way. You're going to be instantly useful to, uh, uh, to older people within the corporation, not just because of your knowledge of marketing, but your skill with social media and, and other tools like that. Other Questions about the curriculum or the kinds of courses that we teach? Yeah. 
You have to look for new. Well, that's <laughs> that's the nature of the workplace in general, right? Uh, we. <laughs> Right. We, we, we don't live in a world anymore where, where you enjoy lifetime employment with a, with a single employer. Uh, what you are doing is, is uh, amassing a greater portfolio of skills throughout your career. And so uh, you'll, you'll look internally at first. If the company is a good match for you, you look for ways to network through the company and, and, and uh, there, there will be a career path defined for you. Interests will kind of uh, emerge over time. And if the company is a good fit for you, you might, you might kind of uh, evolve through there. Other folks move from firm to firm depending upon the opportunities and challenges that they, that they are given. Yeah, it's a very mobile um, situation today. Faculty are, as I said, they're, they're all, uh, they love to teach, they love to talk shop. Uh, we have profiles of each of the faculty members on our website. Take a look at the courses they teach, their research interests. Um, office hours are a great resource for you. Um, meet with faculty members outside of class to talk about your interests, to talk about their research, to get advice from them. Um, as I said, they, uh, they are really concerned with producing the most you know, comprehensive understanding of marketing that they can. And we know that in any given course, we touch on a lot of different issues, some of which are gonna be interesting to one or two of you, right? Uh, and we won't be able to go into enough depth to satisfy you. We can pick it up outside of class through, through visits in the office. Uh, it's possible to do directed readings <coughs> programs in an area of interest if we don't have a, a standalone course. So I would encourage you to just uh, you know, find out what the faculty are up to and uh, haunt their offices. Okay. One, one is required, right? And then you have to take two other electives, right? So you have a total of uh, at least three by the time that, uh, that you're finished, right? Um, yeah, I, I won't try to explain why, why that is. We've uh, gradually restructured the curriculum. We've added some new courses. Um, we, uh, uh, Professor Gilbride is gonna launch a marketing analytics course next year for the first time that we're, we're really excited about. And uh, depending upon how that plays, we might like to elevate that to the level of a requirement. More and more companies are, are really interested in your, your mathematical rigor, you know, how, how quantitative uh, an approach you can bring to a problem. And um, um, if Tim's class flies well, uh, we're hoping maybe to make that a, uh, a requirement that would replace the elective requirement. Okay, yeah, any questions you might have, give me a call or shoot me an email. I'm, I'm happy to visit with you and, and uh, as, as you choose your majors, you, you can't pick a bad one. Uh, but again, mar marketing, uh, for those of you that are especially interested in both quantitative and qualitative approaches to uh, understanding business that want to use both sides of your brain, marketing's a pretty good choice. Thank you. <laughs>